Here are some tips and tricks for your Poco X7 Pro. So first of all, the cleaner is a pretty good tool that allows you to clean all the trash that you can collect after some time on your phone. Usually it is accessible, for instance, through the home screen, and once you open it, you will see the summary of the cleaner. So as you can see, we can find some, uh, we, can, we have the summary of the trash size, but in addition to that, we can find, for instance, the cache files, and we can reveal details. So we can immediately remove cache files from your phone. We have obsolete files, packages, resi residuals, as well as memory, so we can release the memory a little bit as well. And of course, you can choose one by one what you actually wish to clean. So if you don't want to remove, for instance, cache files from files app by Google, then you can untick it and it won't be touched. If you decide to finally clean your phone, then you have the cleanup button and there we go. If you cannot find the cleaner in the home screen, then you can find it in the security app. And then in security, you have it over here. By the way, security is also a pretty cool app that allows you to find a bunch of different stuff. Uh, for instance, the aforementioned cleaner, we can also optimize our phone by pressing this optimize button. We can perform a security scan. We can boost our device. We can boost the speed of our device and so on. We also have some hidden features here as well, such as the game turbo and so on and so forth. So be sure to check that out as well. And if you scroll all the way down, you can also swipe up in order to find this toolbox with every tool that this app has to offer. Now, in addition to that, we can go to the settings. And first, I'm going to show you something in notifications and status bar. Um, and that is this option, don't show icon labels. This option is enabled by default and it, um, this applies to the control center. The control center can be accessed by uh, swiping on the right side of your phone from the top towards the bottom like so. And here we have some pretty cool shortcuts if you didn't know yet. Uh, for instance, we can enable the Wi-Fi, we have some um, other tools like the Bluetooth, the airplane mode, battery saver, and so on and so forth. So, as you may have noticed, they are not labeled. So if you don't recognize these icons, if you don't know what they do, you can enable or actually disable this option so that we have the text below the button. So now you will know what each of these buttons do. Another thing that can be quite useful for some people that are used to different layout for backgrounds, for background apps. So if you open the background apps, you may have noticed that um, the apps are sorted like this. So two in a row and then uh, so on and so forth. And in order to close them, then of course we need to swipe right or left. However, if you prefer a more traditional uh, layout, then you can actually go to the home screen. And then if you scroll all the way down here, you can arrange items in recent. So if you switch to horizontally, then it looks like this. And now you need to swipe up or perhaps down. I think we cannot swipe down. Uh, so if we swipe down, you can actually lock it. But as you can see, it changes the layout. So if you are more comfortable with this layout, then of course you can switch it over here. Now, we're gonna go back to the main page of settings and this time we're gonna go to display and brightness and over here we have AI image engine. And here we can find three pretty cool tools that might be useful to you, that you may find actually quite um, useful to use. Now here we have the super resolution that enhances videos. And what I mean by that, it upscales the resolution of videos. Of course, the drawback is that we use a little bit more battery, but of course this is the price that we can pay to have better quality of our videos, higher resolution. We also have the HDR enhancement that allows you to process videos using HDR effects to bring out more detail in the lighter and darker areas. And we also have MEMC that allows you to generate additional frames to videos to make content appear smooth and transitions lively. And that's pretty much it in terms of AI. However, I have to mention that if you want to use MEMC, you also have to use the video toolbox. And in order to use the video toolbox, you need to go back to the settings, scroll all the way down and go to additional settings. And then over here, we need to go to floating windows, go to the site toolbox. And here we have video toolbox. Now, let me quickly show you how the video toolbox looks like. So once you open a video, you should be able to find this thin line that you can 
open in order to find the toolbox and you have a bunch of different stuff that can be useful like for instance you can take a screenshot you can cast it you can record it and so on and so forth besides that we also have the sidebar that i already have um, enabled and you can find it on the site and here we have a quick access to different apps. We can actually use up to 10 apps by our own choice that will be visible from the top. And below that, we also have some suggested apps. If you want to manage that, then you need to scroll all the way down. And here you have this plus button, and then you can edit those apps. All right, so now that we have this covered, we can go back. And since we are in additional settings, I can also show you a gesture shortcuts where we can find find five pretty cool stuff that can be used on a daily basis really for instance over here we can enable and disable the power button shortcut for the digital assistant so that is the gemini or google assistant we can find the shortcuts for the screenshot so we can slide three fingers down on the screen uh, in order to take a screenshot or we can use volume down plus power button all of which can be enabled and disabled we can also capture a partial screenshot so you can select the area that you wish to save we have the launch camera shortcut where we can double press the power button in order to turn on the camera or we can use the volume down twice in the lock screen in order in order to also launch the camera and we also have the flashlight shortcut which is a pretty convenient one you can double press the power button instead of the launch camera of course in order to turn on or off the flashlight and another thing is the otg which allows you to uh, connect and power type c devices usb type c devices so mainly if you connect something through the usb port to your phone and it doesn't work you might need to enable otg in order to do so most of the time it should actually enable automatically once you connect something but if it doesn't then you can check it out over here if this option is enabled all right now once we have additional uh, settings done we can go back and this time we're going to scroll up and go to sound and vibration. And over here, if you scroll all the way down, uh, you can find sound effects. And here we have the graphic equalizer where we can use EQ for the sound. So if you prefer to have, for instance, more bass, then of course you can increase it over here. You can use a custom um, preset and create your own one. Or you can use one of these presets that you have over here. And of course, the Dolby Atmos. It is actually enabled by default, but if for some reason you think that it is not enabled on your phone, then you can check it over here, whether it is enabled or not. Now, then we're going to go to personalization in the settings. And here we can find also quite useful tools, quite fun. Uh, one of which is always on display. We can enable it over here and we can also customize. There are a bunch of different customization options, so you can choose whatever you like. We also have notification effects, which can be used as, for instance, the edge lighting. You may know this as edge lighting. So when you receive a notification, these sites will glow up in either blue or red, or you can use something like this, which is pretty cool as well. And besides that, if you go to the lock screen, you can customize the lock screen over here. However, there is a pretty cool visual effect that you can use on the lock screen. And I'm going to actually use one of the presets. You can see it over here that the text is behind the clouds. And that is not like a wallpaper or something. I mean, it is a wallpaper overall. Or over here, as you can see, the timer is hidden a little bit behind this mountain. And this is the effect that is called depth. We can use it to create a pretty cool uh, wallpaper, uh, lock screen actually. And the text can be hidden behind an object. So let me actually use this one as an example. You can see that the text is hidden and here we can enable and disable the depth. You can see the difference now between this option being enabled and disabled. You can of course use your own wallpaper. So let's use one of the local photos and let's say I'm going to choose maybe this thing. Well, we can even use a video, uh, but in this case we cannot really access depth. So let's maybe use something else. Let's go back to the local photos. And I'm going to use this one. And now we can use depth. As you can see, the text is being hidden behind the car, which is really, really cool. So if you have a pretty cool wallpaper and the phone detects that there is an object and it can hide the text behind that object, 
then you can use the depth. Pretty cool stuff. All right. Now, let's go back, let's exit. And I think this is pretty much all in the personalization. Of course, we have more stuff over here, but I don't think they are really worth mentioning that much. So now we're going to go back and the last thing that I want to show you in the settings is in apps. And over here, we can set up the app lock. App lock allows you to create a password. By default, we can use that, but of course, we can change it to pin or password. And once you draw or write the password for yourself, then you can choose apps that will be locked behind a password or even the fingerprint. So we have some suggestions over here. I'm going to proceed. We can turn on the fingerprint. So if you set up the fingerprint, then you can use it for the app lock as well. We have fingerprint verified. Here we can choose which apps should be locked and which should not. Of course, you can add more than these that are here. And if you go back and let's say now if I want to open YouTube, then I need to provide the password or use my fingerprint. And there we go. So as you can see, this is how we can protect our privacy and lock uh, apps that we wish to have access to. Of course, you can, like I said, you can choose which apps should be locked. It's not like they have to be locked or you cannot change it. You can actually decide by yourself which apps can be locked. And the last tip is for those who like to record videos. If you plan, for instance, recording some vlogs or something, there is a great tool in the camera. If you go to the video and if you open the camera menu over here, you will find the teleprompter. Teleprompter allows you to create, write a script. And then once you start recording a video, you can actually play the teleprompter and it will slowly scroll down. Of course, you can change the scrolling speed if needed. You can adjust the text size. You can edit the text as well, of course, by tapping this button. And you can also import text if needed. So this is a really cool and convenient tool that allows you to uh, not be bothered with the text or uh, with uh, you don't have to worry pretty much about the text anymore uh, or you don't have to worry about the script because you don't have to remember it all the time now. And that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe to my channel and see you in my next videos. Bye.